Like so many of you, we were amazed when we heard the remarkable story of one of the most inspirational runners who you've probably never heard of. The story of Florence Eilock was shared on Twitter by her grandson, Scott Pack, and has now been seen by thousands of people around the world. We caught up with Scott to hear Florence's story in his own words, and also find out what it means to him that so many people now know the story of his grandmother. As a teenager in the early 1930s, my grandmother, Florence Eilott, worked at the Houses of Parliament. She was on the catering staff and worked at the tea rooms there. In her spare time, she was a very keen runner and a specialist at the 220-yard dash. And apparently word had got round the tea rooms that she was a bit handy as a sprinter. And one of the MPs suggested to her that she try out a particular challenge, which apparently was a tradition of Parliament, which was to attempt to run across Westminster Bridge within the 12 chimes of Big Ben at noon. And she accepted. And on the morning of April the 14th, 1934, she donned her running gear, jogged across to the far side of Westminster Bridge, to St Thomas's Hospital. And using that as her starting point, she waited for that first bomb and then sprinted across Westminster Bridge, which was full of traffic and pedestrians, and, by all accounts, made it across within the 12 chimes, becoming the first person to ever do so. The event became part of my sort of family folklore. It's a story my grandmother used to tell me and my grandfather used to tell me, and uh, whenever I used to visit, uh, I'd often get her to talk about it. But it didn't really make a big splash in history. I mean, she's not remembered for this. Um, she's not down in, in any record books or anything. But I thought it was a story that was worth sharing. So I created a little Twitter thread which talked through these events and included some photographs from the time. And I, I knew it was going to be reasonably popular because it's, a, it's an interesting story. But I, I could never have expected what happened next. Initially, as you probably expect from a Twitter feed like this, it was um, commented on and retweeted by people I know and people I follow and follow me. But very quickly, it started getting shared at great speed. And within a couple of hours, my Twitter stats told me that over a million people had seen it. And it was getting commented on and retweeted by, you know, Gabby Logan and Dina Asher-Smith and uh, Victoria Derbyshire and then MP started getting on board and as I was pulling the thread together I thought I should probably Google her name, her maiden name, uh, Florence Eilot, to see if there were any other records. We had um, family clippings and press clippings and stuff. So I Googled it and only one entry came up and it turned out to be a YouTube video of the event. It was footage of the event recorded in 1934 which had only recently been digitised and put up on YouTube. And I was flabbergasted, absolutely amazed to see my grandmother pegging it across Westminster Bridge, surrounded by pedestrians and traffic. It was quite remarkable. So I immediately sent it to my dad, who had gathered together all the clippings for the thread. And it was the first time he'd seen it too. It was a, a wonderful moment for us to share, very moving uh, and very exciting. The interesting thing is that the overwhelming response has been positive huge amount of people saying how wonderful it is to see such an inspiring story on Twitter because Twitter is often not full of very pleasant stuff. I guess in a way I'm, I'm just really pleased that her story's out there. I mean I wasn't on any sort of mission to make her well known or anything. I genuinely just thought it was quite a sweet story. So I'm just pleased that people know her name and uh, are commenting on her and, and finding her in, in any way inspirational. I think that's, I think that's lovely. My grandmother died in 2002, so she would have had no concept of the internet or social media or anything like that. So it would have taken quite a bit of explanation just to get to the point where I could show her the response, I guess. I think she would have been quite touched. I think she would have thought it's, it, it was quite amusing. I visit my grandparents quite regularly and we'd often get to chat about her running career both she and my, and my grandfather, Ernest, or Nobby as he was known, they were Florian and Nobby. They were both runners and that's how they met, that's how they got together. So if, if they hadn't been runners, I wouldn't be here today. 
to give you an idea of just how amazing Florence's achievement was, the distance across Westminster Bridge from St Thomas's Hospital to the Elizabeth Tower behind me is 1160 yards. Now that's just over 350 metres. And according to records at the time, Florence did it in around 40 seconds. So that's just over three minutes per mile pace, which is close to the women's world record at the 200 metres. So the next time you walk or run across Westminster Bridge, you can think of Florence and her amazing story.